what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here at Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete because guess what? We have one mean muscle power machine. This is it. This is a 2022 BMW M8. And guess what? This is the M8 competition. But before we get into this two-door all-wheel drive twin turbo V8 vehicle, let's talk about what's going on here. BMW, Bavarian Motor Works. They've been doing performance, luxury, and that unique German style for decades. It all started with airplanes and airplane engines, eventually motorcycles, and then automobiles. Now, with this M8 being an 8 Series, obviously you got that larger size, but don't let it fool you. With the coveted X-Drive all-wheel drive system, like I mentioned, twin turbo V8 power, this vehicle is sort of like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Now, when you look at this type of price point of performance cars, there's plenty to choose from, but is the BMW M8 competition, is it the king of all of the competition within the kingdom? Let's go ahead, let's dive into this flat black sinister M8 competition and find out. Right off the bat, I love the style, especially when it comes to the headlights. This, of course, has that BMW laser light technology with your daytime running lamps having that halo connection to the past, and then you'll notice you have the LED turn singles as well. Now, working your way down, we do have a little bit of this metallic gloss black. What We got massive corner air intakes. Of course, with a beefy V8 and twin turbos, you're gonna have to bring in some cool air. We got heat exchangers behind those to channel all the air towards both corners, passenger and driver's side. And then of course, you got a little bit of a low extension on that front fascia. Now, when we come across the iconic grill, we've seen the grills change over years. This obviously smaller than what you would find on an M4 or an M3, but still kind of elongated, but this is that kidney-shaped grill design. What I like about it is that we have black chrome around the perimeter. We got a forward-facing camera, and I'm really digging the vertical slots. Everything else is wide open, and of course, you gotta have the M8 badge. Remember, these colors represent the motorsport history, the motorsport tradition of BMW, and that's what M stands for, is motorsport. Working your way down, you have that lower grill area, nice and wide open to bring in more air, and you'll notice how they bring the splitter out to kind of get more air towards that radiator and less air going underneath the vehicle. Now, when we get up onto that long, low slung hood, I really love the way they do the body lines and how the hood meets with the top of the grill. There's that iconic badge, Bavarian Motor Works, all started in the early 1900s. And then other than that, you're gonna get a slight rise on both sides of the hood and then everything else just coasts right towards the A pillars. Now, as we coast around the bend, what are we working with wheel and tire setup? We have these 20 inch wheels up front, split spoke design, gloss black, love the style, super and clean. I wish I had the self-centering center caps. You could actually spin them and they'll always land BMW up top, but this one does not have it. You are getting those Smurf blue, Papa Smurf blue, six piston calipers with the M badging on it. And then you'll notice peaking behind these massive wheels are ginormous brakes. The size of a personal pan pizza, actually a medium sized pizza, personal pan pizza would be too small. That'd be like a nine inch rotor. We don't want that. We have over 15 inch rotors, cross drilled, two piece rotors, and of course you got adaptive suspension, all four corners. Now, if you're wondering, well, Joe, what's the size of the tire? 275 on the width, 35 series sidewall. And remember, like I said, we have X drive, all wheel drive. That means that this thing is gonna grip the asphalt like Gorilla Glue is just poured all over these tires. Now, as we come down the side, you do have the venting with the M8 badge. Remember, like I said, motorsport history. And then as we kind of coast out, you'll notice, you'll notice the size of this vehicle. So when you're comparing this to a AMG product, an Audi, or even, you know, some people might say, hey, I'll get my Dodge Challenger Hellcat Red Eye and run it up against this thing. You can see the size of this M8. Now you do have gloss black on the mirror caps. 
with your LED turn signals, 360 degree cameras, and they are power folding. Another thing I wanna point out is I love the way they work the arrow into the actual housing for your side mirrors. You can see that winglet that's built right into the actual mirror. Up top, what do we got? Yum, yum, carbon fiber. Somebody poured a bucket of carbon fiber all over the roof. This cuts about eight pounds of weight, lowers the center of gravity, and when you pull up to your cars and coffee event, this is what all the little boys and girls want to see is some nice carbon fiber. You'll notice that flat black color. Love the way they work. The side sill extension all the way down. I don't know if you hear sirens. Those are sirens for people that have the AMGs and people that have the Audis that are afraid of this vehicle because that's how scary this vehicle looks with this flat black paint. Now, as we work towards the rear, large quarter window, large quarter window, nice low sloping roof line. There goes the owners. I hope they're gonna be okay going to the hospital. You have a nice flared out rear fender. And let's talk about the rear. So we got Pirelli P0s, of course. Out back, you're looking at 285, so a little bit wider. Of course, the, this is rear wheel drive biased, but if the power is gonna go front to rear, depending on what the system determines. And then as we come around the back to the rear of this vehicle, I do like the way they dropped in the DOT required reflectors into that wide flared bumper area. Nice job on the LED lighting. And then of course, one of my favorite touches is the M8 competition badge. The only way to get an M8 for 2022, they're all competition. So you can't get a regular M8. The one thing I'm gonna zonk, I wish that this trunk lid spoiler was carbon fiber. There needs to be a little bit more carbon fiber, not just the hood, excuse me, the roof, but also it would have looked good here. And then as we get down to the ground level, you'll notice the massive quad tip exhaust. You can make it louder, you can make it quieter, depending on who you want to piss off and when you want to piss them off. And then you have that great looking rear diffuser, but the width of this thing from the back just looks menacing. Let's go ahead, let's pop that massive hood and see what kind of numbers this M8 competition is spitting out. All right, guys, we're trying to find out if this performance luxury vehicle deserves the crown. Let me know after we talk about this thing. Check it out. That is that massive 4.4 liter twin turbo V8. I do like the engine cover. Looks tasteful. You got a little bit of carbon fiber going on. You got the M power, mm -mm, good power. The one thing that's a little daunting is that there's no room underneath this hood. So they really shoehorned this engine into the front of this BMW M8 competition. But what are we talking about power-wise? This thing spits out 617 horsepower, churns 553 pound-feet of torque, made it to a ZF eight-speed automatic transmission. Get ready for this. Zero to 60, 2.5 seconds. So go get your char your Challenger, your Charger, Hellcat Red Eye. This thing is gonna smoke you off the line. Quarter mile. If Vin Diesel is telling you and Dom Toretto is telling you that you owe him a 10 second car, you can give him one of these. Quarter mile goes by 10.7 seconds at 129 miles an hour. Top speed, a tick under 190 miles per hour. MPGs, 19 in the city, 26 on the highway, and she's not a lightweight. Vehicle weighs 4,251 pounds, but definitely is bringing the performance numbers, especially to the competition. But you know what? It's one thing to look at the heart of the beast. It's another thing to hear what this beast sounds like. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's fire it up and have a little bit of an eargasm. <laughs> All right, guys, we're inside the 2022 M8 competition. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, all my neighbors have Mercedes-Benz vehicles, Audis. I want to roll up in my neighborhood in this sinister, sexy twin turbo V8 beast. But of course, I'm curious about the price. How much is it? Very good question. MSRP brand new, 
starts at $132,000. Of course, depending on how you spec it, it goes way up from there. But let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. Tons of leather and nice contrast stitching up top, all the way across. You do have some bright silver aluminum, two memory settings for the passenger seat, the Harman Kardon sound system, very tasteful speaker grill covers, multi-speaker system. Armrest is as hard as a German rock, but it looks good. Door pocket, pretty decent size. So you could probably get a Big Mac in there, a large fry, and one of those apple pies that they sell, nice, hot, and warm, all in that pocket. Now going from the door panel to the dash, same story. The leather, the stitching, really nice smooth material. We got that massive 10.25 infotainment system screen, navigation, it's got the hand gesture displays if you don't wanna touch the screen or you could go ahead and touch it. You got all your different swipe settings with your setup, engine data, even the compass rose, or you could go into car settings, of course, and what is that gonna give us? That's gonna give us the M menu. So you just hit M, head up display, instrument panel, you can adjust everything exactly the way you want it. Let me throw it into reverse. There's your backup camera, nice clear resolution. Uh, resolution. You got your trajectory and you got 360. Working our way down, of course, we got dual climate controls. We got ventilated seats, thank God, because it's hot today. Simple radio controls. You got an M8 competition badge. I'm gonna zonk it, it is a little gloss black heavy. And then another thing I'm gonna zonk is what's going on here. This gray faux wood or real wood is not working. This needs to be all carbon fiber. Give me the carbon fiber, but you open up that door, you get two cup holders, a USB-A and wireless charging. Close it up. We got the new iDrive 7 control wheel that's going to help you go through the navigation and stuff. We got our M shifter here with the leather and the motorsport colors that's going to uh, change that 8-speed ZF 8-speed automatic, bright red start stop button. You got your other M modes and exhaust buttons and everything, and then you got a little bit softer leather, leather on the armrest. Bombs away, what can you put in there? First of all, you got a USB-C, you got a 12 volt, and you got felt lining. You could actually put, I would say, 14 GI Joe figures. Put Destro in there, Cobra Commander, all of them nicely done. Perfect, Love. I love GI Joe. Snake Eyes was my favorite. But anyways, let's continue. Seats, the leather, perforated material, M8 badging, look at the stitching. All sewn very nicely, great bolstering, obviously full electric assist for the passenger and the driver, but these are gonna keep you comfy to drive every day, but also are gonna hold you in for when you wanna do your track day. Now I know some of you might be saying, well, there's no sunroof. Well, guess what? We got a carbon fiber roof and we got that Alcantara soft as a teddy bear. So you could actually, if your daughter or son wants a teddy bear, you don't have to get them one, just have them get in your M8 and hold on to this because it's softer than a teddy bear. Why don't you get your butt over here though? I got a BMW steering wheel, not with your name on it, but with the M name on it. Come on over, I wanna show you. All right guys, business time behind the wheel, this M8 competition. You get this drop dead gorgeous black chrome sill plate here, M8 competition lights up, and guess what? We're carbon core all the way to the center of this apple, and then Pedal box, they do a great job. Nice large dead pedal, brake pedal and throttle, all aluminum, makes it match nicely. And then seat controls, same story. You got a little bit of silver touches to it, but you're gonna be able to control the side bolster, up and down, left and right, side to side, all the motions. And then I'm six feet tall, even with the carbon fiber roof, give me a helmet, I'm ready to take this to Sebring. Steering wheel, Nice leather, they do a great job. And it doesn't need to be flat bottom. Flat bottom is overrated. What I love is just the thickness of the wheel, the great motorsport stitching, the M badge it is a heated steering wheel. You got your M preference buttons. Paddles, which I am gonna zonk. These should be made out of metal and they should be a little bit larger. And we do have electric tilting and telescoping wheel. Dash, 12.1 inches of visual pleasure. You got that nice large tack in the center on both sides. You got all the instrumentation you could ask for. And then on top of that, they give you a ginormous, stupendous 15 inch head up display. But why don't we go ahead, I'm not getting in the back seat. 
Seats are tight back there, but you could put a paper mache doll or a small child or a teddy bear if your kid really wants a teddy bear. But why don't we get into the trunk because I want to go on throttle in this German beast. Right, guys, time to get in that cargo area. Of course, being a BMW, you hit the button. You have a nice electric assist so you can save all your muscles for steering this beast. What are you greeted to? You're greeted to 15 cubic feet of space, nice low cargo floor, and it goes on forever there. You could fold down the rear seats very easily by pulling these handles up top, which is great. And then of course, you're gonna have the required Twinkie cargo net. That little book there, that is actually the history of BMW. They want you to read it before you go on throttle. But speaking of on throttle, I already know the history. I've been sharing it with you from time to time, but I think that you deserve some instant on throttle. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle in our M8 competition. All right, guys, we're in this M8 competition. Ready to rock and roll. Of course, we need to start with an on throttle. The numbers are saying zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds. Let's find out. On throttle, here we go. <laughs> wow. Like a Tomahawk cruise missile being launched off of a battleship. That's how hard this M8 competition hits off the line. All grip, all stick, no slip whatsoever. It is unbelievable the technology in a 4,200 pound vehicle that it can accelerate this hard, this smooth, yet you could drive it every day and also rip it through the twisty bits. Love the seating position. If you feel like it's a little too tight, you can adjust the bolstering, like I said, to all electric assist. But from behind the wheel, I love seeing the top of that low slung hood. And it just surprises you. It surprises you how this car performs. You ready? On throw, here we go. On the brakes. Nice, good feedback coming from the pedal. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. Dab of the brakes into this turn. Woo yeah, I'm telling you right now, the balance front to rear, especially for such a large vehicle, very, very surprising. And it just goes to show that a lot of people that are not in the know might pull up next to this vehicle and might try to race it or run it or whatever you want to call it and get their doors just totally blown off. And then if you want to be smooth, you could be smooth. You want to quiet the exhaust? You could quiet the exhaust. I love all the nice finishes everywhere. The one thing that's bothering me, well, two things, is the gloss black and then also this, this faux wood or it might be real wood. I have no idea. Uh, I, it needs to be carbon fiber. Needs to be in an AMA a competition. But visibility out the front is actually really great. Even out the back with that low sloping rear glass window, you would think it would be like looking out of a mail slot in a door. It actually gives you quite good visibility out the back. But remember, we're not worried about who's behind us. We're worried about where we're going in front of us. Speaking about that. Oh, it's wrong. Here we go. <laughs> I love the hit off the line. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. And then you get on those binders, and this thing sheds speed like a German Shepherd sheds hair. That quickly. That much. And that's what you want. It's not just about straight line acceleration. You need to have the braking performance as well. I remember back in the day, my good friend Chris had a notchback Fox body Mustang, five liter, fast as hell in a straight line, but it had rear drum brakes. And there were a couple sketchy moments that we had in that car. This, there's nothing sketchy. It's like operating this is like operating the wheels on an etch-a-sketch. That's how precise the steering is. And that's one of the things that BMW has worked hard on to get back. Because it used to be great steering feel, then it kind of went away. But speaking of steering, here we go. On throttle. Pauses for a second, then we're off. On 
the brakes. Look at this. It just rips right out of the turn. Dab of the brakes. Light feel on the steering. God, this thing is freaking amazing. Freaking amazing. But just like everything else, all good things must come to an end. We got to get back to Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete. I hope it was worth the click going on throttle with me. I'm going to say yes. But uh, definitely put in the comments section how you feel about this on throttle in this BMW M8 competition. We're going to get back to Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete and wrap it up just like a big Christmas gift. I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys. It's been another hot and heavy kind of day with this twin turbocharged beast. I definitely want to thank Miro, Jeff, Mike, and the rest of the crew here at Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete for allowing us access to this 2022 M8 competition. Let me know what you think. Has BMW just hit the nail on the head to make this the king of those luxury performance cars, or is it missing something? Let me know in that comment section, but if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. We got to give it up to Stephen Flood of Stephen Flood Photography. Give him a follow on Instagram. Check out his masterful work with such an eye for detail on Instagram, Facebook, and everywhere else on the interwebs. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.